you found a place to belong here in the Circle of Friends. I'm Missy, and I'm with Beth today. Hey, Beth. Well, hello, Missy. Hey, I want to take a minute because we have actually heard from someone from Facebook. So I want to give a shout out to Todd, who is one of our listeners, Uh regular listeners. And that's amazing to me. So first of all, thanks, buddy, for listening (laughs) to us. Um, But he uh, said had some very kind words to say to us on Facebook about Mm how uh, one of our programs had uh, just encouraged him. Mm -hmm. And I love that. I love hearing from listeners. Thank you so much, Todd, for reaching out to us. And we hope and pray that you'll continue to listen to us. We pray for you. We pray for all of our listeners Mm -hmm. before we begin. And uh, honestly, we're just... Um, okay, Beth, I'm just going to say it. We're a couple of little old ladies who are sitting at a table. <laughs> hip, uh, little old oh, ladies. we're hip. We're hip. We're hip and cool. Grammys and all just that. Just ask us. Just ask. Don't ask our kids, though. So. But ask our grandkids. They'll That's tell you. Right. They'll That's tell you. Right. They will tell you that. Um, but uh, it's it's encouraging to hear that because we know and believe that God has given us an opportunity to talk about His Word, and we have a passion for God's Word. So uh, in whatever ways that we encourage you, it just delights our hearts. Well, Todd, what I receive from that message that you took time to leave on, on Facebook for us is that you are living out um, the Scripture Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as, in fact, you're doing. You know, that that was written in the letter to the church of Thessalonica, but it's true today to the church here in this season, in this time, in this place. And so finding uh, ways to encourage and build up is so important, Mm. and it's a directive straight from the heart of God. Uh, Who's your cheerleader, Missy? Isn't it great to have cheerleaders? Oh, it is. And you know, I was just thinking here, you know, oftentimes I I will not go to Facebook because it's so discouraging. Mm -hmm. And here we've we've had such great encouragement. And so uh, it's an opportunity for that for us, Mm -hmm. that we can encourage one another uh, through social media. We can encourage one another face to face. Uh, You know, Beth, you can still mail a letter, you know, so there's the old fashioned (laughs) way. Yes, I do. Um, I do know that. (laughs) In any way we can, we should encourage one another because we're in this together. You know, we are all on this faith journey. And some of us are, um, I don't even want to say further along the path, but we're on a different portion of the path. Oh yeah. I'm further along the path. Well, because um, I've got a few years on, on some of the wonderful young women that, that I get to sit at the table with. However, I also see them and I tell them, you are so much further ahead than I was at your age. So further along the path, chronologically doesn't always <laughs> exactly. mean further along the path as far as uh, wisdom and understanding. Mm. So it's recognizing where we're at and being authentic along the way. Um, I want to get back to this word cheerleader. You know, I think, Missy, you have had cheerleaders in your life. You have told the story of, um, was it a teacher, a neighbor? Uh, I've had both. Yeah, but- yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure if you're thinking about the one who, where, when I received Christ, right. you know, I was in a missionary school and uh, in Taiwan um, and reading the word of God daily in our classes, going to chapel. I mean, all of that was new for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember he took me aside one day and we sat down and had a little chat and I, I accepted Christ in a, um, it was actually a school assembly. We had, you know, a team come in. I'm right. sure it was a young college team that, you know, they did ventriloquism. They sang. They they had a message. Uh, and I remember, I remember saying, "Yes, I want that." Yeah. But I didn't, I didn't share that with anyone. And so, uh, so for a lot of years, there wasn't there wasn't much growth in my life. And Mm -hmm. I felt that, oh, well, I failed. I tried that and I couldn't live up to what God Mm -hmm. wanted me uh, to be and do. And it wasn't until I was a senior in high school that I had a girlfriend who said, Missy, God hasn't moved. You're the one that's moved Uh and you can move back. Uh I mean, he's right there. He has not turned away from you at all. And that was uh, life-changing for me to realize that he still loved me uh, and unconditionally so. Mm-hmm. And to then then I began to grow mm-hmm. as I went on into college and got involved with Campus Crusade and um, just got into the Word of God for myself and began reading it and mm-hmm. kind of took off from there. But it, it's those little things. You know, I'm sure, I, I know I've said before, I'm sure 
you know, that teacher or that friend never had any idea. Right, right. Never had any right. idea of the impact that they had on my life. And I see it very clearly. Right. You know, I think back to the cheerleaders in my life, and it goes way back when I was uh, very young at the church that my family went to. Uh, sisters, actually, Edith Troyer, who happened to be one of my teachers, and Mildred Mildred Lehman, and they have both since passed and reside in heaven now, but they were cheerleaders in my life, um, wonderful cheerleaders, and, and others who were teaching Sunday school and and always there serving. Um, boy, the, their faces are just marching in my mind's eye now. Um, Elva and Clara and another Clara and Leela and my mom, and, you know, they were all people who poured into me. Um, but the... The level of enthusiasm, when I think about an enthusiastic cheerleader, it was definitely the sisters, Edith and Mildred, that just were, they were awesome. You know, then as we move through the, the high school years and the 20-something years, I can think about people who poured into me. Libby was one of them. Mm. Uh, she came into my world before Brian and I were even married, and she was just always an encourager. And then as we move into the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, and the 60s are getting closer <laughs> all the time. Uh, um, closer than you think. <laughs> I think about Suzanne Worley. Oh, my, if you live in the Dover, Philly area, and you don't know Suzanne and Ben Worley, you've missed out. They are just incredible, wonderful people who love the Lord and encourage others. Uh, Jim Mason, i Oh my, so many encouragers. I can't name them all. But God has, in this season of life, given me a cheerleader named Bev. And she she rocks. I mean, talk about a hip Grammy. She she is she's awesome. And she is constantly speaking words of life and hope and encouragement into my heart. But I have to tell you what Bev has done in this 70-something season of life. Uh, She's incredible. She comes to one of those small groups that I get to be a part of. And um, I challenged them earlier this year. I said, you know, we've been going over material that's really great, roundtable format material. Love, love, love the principles that we've learned. But I just have a real... um, passion and maybe a call in this season that what I have that offers the most to the women that I get to do life with is the word of God. And it's not enough to learn about what's in there. I want you to hide that word in your heart. Bev looked at me and she's like, you know, I can't memorize. And I said, I, I think that, I think that if we take this one verse at a time, I think that you can learn this passage. It's going to be a familiar one, Bev. I am not going to um, overwhelm you with something odd and old and that makes no sense to current life activity. Not that I don't love the passages from the prophets and you know some of those that we read and think don't make sense, don't apply to today. This one is very life applicable for today. So, I gave them the challenge, and I said, Philippians, we're going to start in verse 4. We are going to go through verse 9. That's a very, very familiar passage, and we are going to learn verse 4 today, okay? So we read the whole whole chapter of Philippians 4, uh, but verse 4 begins with rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Okay, listener. That's your verse for today, Philippians 4.4. 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. You can remember that at bedtime tonight. I'm confident of it. So verse 5 says, let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. That's pretty short and simple. Verse 6, very familiar. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. Verse 7, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Verse 8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. 
And verse 9, What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Okay, nine verses. I said, we'll say nine weeks, but it might be 10 or 12. We're going to take it slow because I truly want it in you. And Bev looked at me and she shook her head and she said, Beth, 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 you know I can't. I have ADD. (laughs) I'm 70 some years old. I can't. I said, yes, Bev, you can. Well, I saw her less than a week later. She uh, came, we happened to be eating at our uh, same local restaurant that we just love so very much. We'll give a shout out to Rebecca and Rebecca's Bistro. And she came to me and she said, 17. And I said, what? She said, 17. And I kind of looked at her funny and said, 17. I've memorized 17 verses. (laughs) I love it. In less than a week's time, she she committed her ADD brain, her attention deficit disorder brain, to memorizing the Word of God. And she did it. The next day, we were at uh, our small group together, and she did it. She said, Beth, I had to have a pattern. She said, you know, these verses, I knew more of them than I realized, but I can never remember where it's found. Mm-hmm. So she said I had to have a pattern. And the first, the first thing she had to launch with, because she kept forgetting the word rejoice, was Psalm 118.24. That's one she could remember. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice Rejoice and be glad in it she said once i can get that word in my mind i can jump to philippians 4 4 through 9 and at that point she quoted philippians 4 4 through 9 next up she went to james 1 verses she said verse 2 but she honestly did verses 2 through 4 um you know that verse, Missy. You want to pull it up for us? I believe it begins with, count it all joy. Mm. Count it all joy, my brethren, when you fall into various trials and temptations. Uh, I think that's the King James Version. Mm-hmm. Uh, where, which one do you want it from? Oh, it doesn't whichever matter. one, it doesn't matter. All right, well, here's the new King James. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Well, as Bev recited that to me, she She broke down and wept. And it was the word, I think in your uh, translation there, it said reproach, without reproach. Mm -hmm. Her translation said without criticism. Mm. And she just, it spoke to her heart so deeply that she she was like, and he does this without any criticism, Mm. Beth. It was so beautiful, Missy. And from there she went to 1 Thessalonians 5.16, which we just uh, quoted at the beginning of our time together. Rejoice always. Actually, she did 16, 17, and 18. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I was wrong. It's, it's, I said we just quoted it. We did verse 11 earlier. Encourage one another and build one another up just as, in fact, you were doing. So this beautiful cheerleader of mine not only committed to uh, memorizing Philippians 4.4, that's all I was asking her in that first week, but she memorized Psalm 118, 24, Philippians 4, 4 through 9, James 1, 2 through 4, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. And then she said, and Beth, I have one more. Philippians 4, 13. Hmm. I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. Yep, that is. Oh, so overwhelmed my heart with joy that the one who is my greatest cheerleader, I mean, this girl is just always speaking words of life into my heart. Um, 
she she not only listened to what I was asking of them for their good, but she took it above and beyond because she can do all things through Christ who gives her strength. She can memorize, mm. even though she's in her 70s, even though she battles attention deficit disorder, even though she lives and takes care and loves beautifully on a man who has some sort of, um, it's they've gotten rid of the Alzheimer diagnosis, but some sort of memory issues that she has to be very diligent about taking care of him. Even though life is not perfect, this wonderful cheerleader of mine mm -hmm, has committed the word of God into her mind, into her heart, and into her very spirit now. And that, you know what? Missy, even more than any words of encouragement she gives to me, that blesses my soul more than anything. What would we be if we were a world that hid his word in our heart? Oh, it's time to take a break, but we'll be back, and I'm going to give you three guesses what we're going to be talking about, and the first two don't count. You found a place to belong here in the circle of friends. Grab your car keys and round up your squad. It's the perfect time of year for a one-tank trip. Nestled among the rolling hills of Ohio's Amish country, Village Gift Barn, Country Gatherings, and the Gardens are must-see sister stores that are right next door to each other. We carry one-of-a-kind finds and pride ourselves on delivering good old-fashioned customer care for a wow experience. Customers often call our stores hidden gems. Stop by and find out why. Three destination stores, one convenient location, Village Gift Barn, Country Gatherings, and the Gardens at 4755 State Route 39 in Berlin, Ohio, in the heart of Ohio's Amish country. What would you say if I told you that your sexuality is linked to your spirituality? This is Dr. Julie Slattery with Authentic Intimacy. I'm excited to be at the Amish Country Theater on Saturday, February 22nd for an all-day women's conference. Single or married, whether you're 18 or 80, you're invited for a day of worship and teaching. We'll spend the day learning why sex is important to God and why it should be important to us. Head to AuthenticNMC.com slash event. That's AuthenticNMC.com slash event. Walking in a shadowed land of broken dreams and shifting sand Cause I gave my heart away too many times I didn't plan to meet you there Your kindness took me by surprise As grace and mercy showered over me When your grace and mercy showered over me Yeah. 
a voice to feel you breathe I'm caught up in your love for me A heavenly embrace that covers me And I am humbled and amazed As I walk along the way Oh, as I walk along the way A plan for me And I live to praise I live to praise you The Father's heart is full of love for me I live to praise I live to praise you The lover of my soul is set me free I live to praise I live to praise you I worship you, oh God, my worthy King You found a place to belong here in this circle of friends. Missy, I'm going to put you to the test. Oh, dear. Here we go. I told you I was encouraging our Tuesday morning small group to memorize Philippians 4, 4 through 9. Verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. No, that's not it. Yes, that is. Is it? (laughs) That is. You did it. Very good. Listener, it's my challenge to you, too. At the end of today, if you can remember, when you remember Philippians 4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Find us on Facebook and let me know that you've hidden that word in your heart. That thrills me. That absolutely thrills me. You know, I've told you before, my little grandson, he he loves to play with blocks. He loves to build big towers. Well, one day I said to him, I know a song about towers. And uh, he was like, really? So I dug it up in YouTube archives. It's called Blessed Be the Name of the Lord. I won't sing it to you, uh, but it goes, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord most high. And then you repeat that. And then it goes into the rest of the verse. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. Okay, that little guy. We listened to it. He was three years old at the time while we were building our strong towers on the fireplace hearth. And by the end of the day, he was singing it by memory, singing it to his parents. In fact, they texted me that night and said, why, thank you for Lucas's new song. (laughs) Um, when, When it came time for his Aunt Krista's birthday, he called and sang happy birthday to her and then morphed right into, blessed be the name of the Lord. Yeah, he did. He sang the whole thing. So it's now kind of his, um, His anthem. His anthem. It truly is. He still sings it. We are months away from that day that I taught him that song. But recently I was at my favorite little gospel bookstore and uh, they had a 75% off table. So I had to take a look, you know, and I found a plaque. Hmm. Uh Uh-huh. It had a big old tower on it. And it was the verse from Proverbs that says, blessed be the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it. And they are safe. So I have a little room at our house. I call it the party room because it's where the kids can go and play. There's some Christmas lights strung up. And, you know, it's just, it's their toy room. And I hung the plaque in the party room. And uh, when Lucas came, I went down and said, Lucas, look. And he said, cool. And I said, you know what it says? No. I said, it says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it. And they are safe. He said, Bea, I love you so much. (laughs) (laughs) And that made my heart very thankful. And that's not to say he was a perfect little boy all that day. (laughs) But in that moment, um, he had the word of God hid in his heart. And I shared it with him. And I I just knew this is the call on my life. Um, There is nothing more important than I can give you. Then the word of God. I've told my small group for years, the young women that I have the privilege of meeting with, I do not want you to leave this place saying Beth says. I want you to know it's the word of God that says. This, this is truth for life. This is the foundation we stand on. This is the word that is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. There is nothing more important than you that you can memorize and hide in your heart than this word. Mm. And I sit at the tables at Walnut Hills with my with my precious prayer partners who many 
many have had issues of dementia, probably half who come to the table are battling with the issues of dementia, they can still recite scripture. Mm. They may not know their names. They certainly don't know my names. If we sing songs with scripture, they are singing those songs. I remember one dear sweet saint who recently passed. Every time we sat at the table when it was time to pray, she said, John, 316. I could count on her to say it every time, multiple times. What a beautiful prayer. If if that is what comes out of my mouth when I am in my 90s, I will still be a blessing to those who are taking care of me, are doing life with me. The Word of God is the most important thing we have to share, more important than money. Um, knowledge. Um, I love to share sugar. Um, <laughs> my family says, uh, Mom, your love language is, is sugar. The food that we make in our kitchens, more important than, than what is it that you share? We always are sharing something. Hmm. Attitudes, whether good or bad. Opinions, whether true, false, good, bad, uh, life-giving, or quite stinky. We are sharing something. We are to share, as the, Paul told the Church of Corinth, the aroma of Christ. Well, the aroma of Christ is found when we dwell in Him and when the Word of God is at the foundation of what we share with others. So, Missy, Philippians 4.4. 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Amen. Um, I, I do love that, that you start with one and get it in your mind. And it's interesting, uh, as I think about the memorization of Scripture, the discipline of knowing where Scripture is, and even even how Scripture flows together. Because sometimes, you know, for instance, I know that verse. I, I might not have, like, right at the top of my head thought, Philippians 4.4, 4, that's what it is. Right. But you begin to say it, and those familiar words come out, and then it just flows from that. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. I know that verse, too. I've heard that over and over and over again. Be anxious for nothing. This is one we say all the time. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, Mm -hmm. which surpasses all understanding, understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. It's a great place to start for memorization because it reminds you of what God has done for us and where our thoughts and our hearts should be uh, focused. So listeners, this is best challenge. I'm going to take it. I'm taking it on. Philippians 4, 4 through 9. Mm -hmm. Work on it. Work on it. And let us know on Facebook that you're working on it and that it's starting to be uh, a word that is so deeply hidden in your heart that when you go to bed at night and you don't know what to pray, you you begin with, Lord, I'm going to rejoice in you always. Again, I, I will rejoice. Lord, these are the blessings that I am so thankful for, for life and breath, for the truth of your word, for the privilege of prayer. Lord, let my reasonableness, my gentleness be known to all. I know you are near. Hmm. I know you are near. And so, Lord, I choose not to be anxious about anything. But as I'm talking to you in my prayers, my supplications, with so much thanksgiving, Lord, this is my heart. I'm going to present all of this to you, knowing that you and you Hmm. alone are the one who is working and, and willing all things to come together for your good and your glory. Yes, that peace that we all long for, especially at bedtime, will come and it will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. But our part is to set our minds on him first and foremost. And that is our prayer for you, oh listener, and for ourselves. Be that cheerleader that speaks words of life into those in your circle of influence. You've found a place to belong here in the circle of friends. This program was brought to you through the generous support of donors and listeners like you. To contact Circle of Friends Ministries, you can write to P.O. Box 345, Berlin, Ohio, 44610, or find us on Facebook at circleoffriends.fm. Program archives can be found at thelight959.com.